After 16 years, the owner of our first loft decided it was time for some new kitchen cabinets. What he ended up with was a whole new space. Using affordable, everyday materials, Joe Tanny has designed a functional space within a dramatic setting. Joe, you have transformed this space using some very unusual and unpretentious materials. Let's start with the guest bunk behind me. Yeah, this is actually a sleeping nook for overnight guests or say a late Saturday afternoon nap. And we got some storage below. It's built out of Baltic birch, which we've built uh, many things in the entire apartment with. So just a simple platform with a mattress on top. No big deal. First thing we see when we come in directly off the elevator is a workspace. Yeah, this is a little office where a computer, fax machine, and printer. Um, it's integrated with a closet, so as you come right in off the elevator, you can hang up your coat and put your things away. Now, when we move into the space and look down through it, um, you've done something, again, unusual. Instead of uh, concealing the fact that this is a long and narrow space, you've played it up. Yes, well, we've, we've exploited that, so to speak, the bowling alley nature of it. We've push the bathrooms to the side and push storage to the side and put a few new windows in the back so you can see from front to back. Now, unlike a lot of um, industrial buildings, this does not have really high ceilings. No, it doesn't. It's only nine feet, uh, but you can see here in the living area, we carved away, exposed the, uh, the sprinkler pipes and actually used them as a lighting fixture. And uh, on the ceiling itself, on the joists, we put, uh, again, the homosote, the recycled newspaper, and we did it in a pattern and different levels in it. It helps uh, with the acoustics of playing the stereo for the neighbor upstairs, of course. Um, the living room is uh, really casual and oriented to the whole space. Yes, we built a very large media wall, floor to ceiling, wall to wall. It accommodates all the stereo equipment and books and various things and various pieces that our client now is, is collecting uh, over time. When we enter the dining room, you have a custom dining table you've made. Now I have a question to ask. When these pieces are manufactured from a custom design, are they not in fact more expensive than going to a showroom floor? Well, we were very fortunate because we had a great contractor that built everything on site, all the cabinetry, the furniture. This place was a wood shop, I'd say, for about six months, and everything was custom made right here. Um, so therefore, it was, it was less expensive in terms of going to a shop. I love the sideboard that you've created, but you've taken away from an already narrow space. Yeah, we sort of call this the runway. It's held by simple three-quarter inch black steel pipe that plumbers use, and we've cantilevered it out of the wall and just laminated it with stainless steel that we got in the Bowery. You used another uh, material that is common to us, but rarely used exposed on the dining room wall. Yeah, this is actually a cement board. You can buy it at any hardware store. It's typically used behind tile uh, in your shower. It's a water resistant material. Um, and we actually exposed it, trimmed the edges, and used exposed trim rings and used it as a material to layer the stair, uh, the exit stair wall. And it carries actually all the way back into the, to the bathrooms. And you've, um, but you've moved it out far enough, again, taking away from the narrow space to add light. Yes, we thought it was rather dramatic. So lighting was a, was a big deal, as you know. We're only on the third floor. There's a lot of tall buildings but, you know, around us. So we have indirect lighting, we have diffused lighting, and we have some lights in the wall as well. Now, when we go into the kitchen, um, obviously the focal point is this massive uh, movable, I see wheels, yes, it is. island. Uh, it's made out of metro wire shelving. It has, as you said, casters below so we can move it around. It's situated in such a way that we can get large trash cans underneath for recycling and trash it, as required here in New York. And uh, the, the top, it looks like a butcher block. We actually made it out of maple flooring and wrapped it with aluminum. It was, it was uh, cheaper to make it here on site than it was to buy a, a piece of butcher block that large. And the hood fan, you've also um, got a way of making it less expensive for people. Well, it's a, it's a standard piece. We just wrapped the back wall with stainless steel and used galvanized pipes uh, for the exhaust to take it out. And the wall that is uh, surrounding the stove? Uh, directly behind it is a medium density fiberboard that's been lacquered and polyurethaned and sanded. It, it sort of looks like leather. It's actually sawdust. Um, and around that is a polycarbonate material that actually refracts the lights, it's translucent, so it allows light to come into the entire loft. Um, and we made doors out of it and a clear story. Well, let's go have a closer look at those. Okay. 
So Joe, let's talk about the ingenious ways you've brought light from this room into the rest of the space. Well, we use it by using a polycarbonate material. We used it in the doors uh, with a unistrut frame and we also use it as a clear story. The interesting thing about the material, it's actually a honeycomb and it actually refracts the light further into the loft. And you added some windows here as well? Yeah, it was pretty dark back here so we uh, enlarged some openings in, in the rear and located them such that you can see it all the way through throughout the entire loft. And you've put indirect lighting as well. Again, on top and below the cabinets, yes. Um, to offer a little bit of a glow. Now the master bedroom further exaggerates this long line through the space. It's actually tucked behind the stove so from the rest of the loft you can't see the bed and when you're actually in the room and in the bed your focus is outdoors and you don't see the rest of the loft so it's actually a very you know comfortable cocoon space. And the only space in the loft that has carpet. Yeah so it, it changes the entire uh, nature of the room, the sound, the feeling, everything uh, transforms. It's a little more comfortable, so to speak. And right off the bedroom, I can see through translucent panels the uh, ensuite. That's the, uh, the bath, and uh, we used a structural acrylic that's translucent on both sides as wall, as the wall, put it right on the studs as opposed to using sheetrock. And when the light's on in the bathroom, you can see it from here and vice versa. Opens the whole loft up. And the doors? They're made out of plywood, uh, industrial uh, hardware, and on one side we put a very large mirror and used uh, an actual handicap uh, uh, bar as the hardware to move it, and it actually doubles as a towel bar. So. That's a terrific idea. And you've incorporated the laundry room into the main bathroom? Yes, yes we did. So. Uh, it's a, it's a real luxury in New York City to have your own washer and dryer. So I have to ask, how does the client like his kitchen renovation? I, I think he's pretty happy with it. <laughs> Thank you for showing it to us.